I'll never forget driving down after the shooting, walking through the site, hearing cell phones ringing with people trying to find their loved ones. The next morning, the sheriff and I started the Victims Fund. But you know, money won't stop the next massacre. Not when Donald Trump protects the NRA and Adam Laxalt won't enforce background checks. When I'm governor, we're gonna ban assault rifles, bump stocks, silencers. We need to take action. And now's the time to take action. Tonight, the top two Nevada Democratic governor candidates face off in a live debate. But we need to do a lot more when it comes to guns. We need to get to the bottom of what's happened. The Dickey Amendment uh, is get, caused a great deal of problems as it relates to gun violence. Uh, we should have had that eliminated years ago. It wasn't. It wasn't until two months ago that that was finally taken out. We can begin to do some research on the, what's causing gun violence in our schools and in other areas. But my immediate thing I need to do is we need to implement background checks. We need to ban bump stocks, ban weaponry, assault rifles, weapons of war, and ban expanded cartridges. But gun violence isn't really something that entered my mind. Sandy Hook changed everything. We need to make sure that our kids are safe when they go to school. Whatever that encompasses, I totally support 100%. Voters have heard about these. So let's talk about the A minus right. from let's NRA. Talk about it. Uh, oh. So the, 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 the message from the June Kiliani campaign is basically here's Steve Sisolak. He was a conservative Democrat, he was a gun guy until he started running in the Democratic primary. Suddenly, that history of being friendly with the NRA is over, and now suddenly you're a progressive. Is that right? No, there was never, and, and Commissioner June Kiliani, Chris knows better than that. There was never any friendly with the NRA, John. There a minus is pretty friendly. Well, A minus isn't friendly. I never took a vote that related to that. I might have filled out a questionnaire 22 years ago. I don't even remember. But I can tell you that I'm an adult. My opinions have changed as things have happened. What happened at Sandy Hook is where this started. And I think a lot of people were a lot more uh, gun friendly 22, 25 years ago, as I might have been. I was on the ground on 1 mm -hmm. October. There was no other commissioner that walked through that festival lot on October 2nd with law enforcement like I did. I saw the bodies. I saw the blood. I saw cell phones, heard cell phones ringing with loved ones trying to reach somebody that was at the concert. For someone to have war, weapons of war in their room and expanded cartridges is ridiculous. And to try to make this a new campaign issue, Chris knows that it's not true. She knows where I stand on guns, yet she continues to put out misinformation. So that's unfortunate. That's where it's she's not gone. misinformation. I, Let me ask you a question. No, I got to follow up here, John. All right. Chris keeps in, she, she, I know she's a former school teacher from 20 years ago. C is a passing grade with the NRA. She clearly passed when it came to the NRA's questionnaire. Now, I don't know what I did in terms of how the questions were answered, but I can tell you everything that's happened since Sandy Hook has, I've seen things I never wanted to see. I visited a war zone and it's changed things. When we face the worst tragedy that this community has ever faced on 1 October, and when I got that call at 1030 at night when the sheriff called me, my life changed forever. And I did everything I possibly could to help improve this situation, get our community back together. We put out calls for blood. We put out calls for food. We started a victims fund that raised $32 million. It's not going to save anybody's life, but it's going to help put people back together. I think that we did the right thing at the right time, and I'm proud of what we did. And your campaign logo was on the button for the GoFundMe. But you know what, that, be that as it may, that got changed. None of us were called by the sheriff that night. I did not find out till I woke up that morning. And I'm vice chair of the county commission. We've had to put in some protocols now for notification when something like this happens because staff just left a message on everybody's phones and didn't bother to What do you mean his follow. campaign logo was on the GoFundMe? It, it was on the page when it was first set up. Is that true, Commission? I don't know what she's speaking to. What campaign logo, my name? Yeah, your name, your, their current logo that you use right now. My name in a type style. I, I don't know. I can tell you that we started a campaign at 2 o'clock in the morning, and we did everything we possibly could. And to come up with this ticky-tack, picky uni stuff, everybody was called. I answered the phone at 1030 at night. I didn't go to voicemail. I picked up the phone, and I did everything I could. That's all I stand for. We did that as a team, as a community. It was a sheriff. It was Aaron Rauscher at the FBI. We worked hand in glove for two, three weeks on a daily basis to try to pull this community back together. And I'm proud of that, John. Okay. Just days after the 1 October shooting, Steve Sisolak took thousands of dollars from a machine gun range that markets a weapons experience for children. He's also been called the most conservative Democrat. No wonder the NRA gave him an A-minus rating. That's the truth about Steve Sisolak. And so, Commissioner Sisolak, is that the truth? Absolutely not. And they know that. I don't know who put up the ad. It was one of the 
outside groups that have come in to support Commissioner June Kiliani with seven figure media buys. Uh, they know fully well where I stand. I probably got, I guess I did, I'll confirm that, a contribution from a parent company that owns a gun range facility. Anyone to question what my motives were or what happened on 1 October should be ashamed of themselves. It's clear that I stepped up when I thought that it was necessary for me to step up, and I did the best job that I possibly could as it relates to that. So, no, the ad is simply not true. Uh, Commissioner June Kiliani, is that ad misleading? No, I don't believe so, but it's not my ad, so I don't know. I, I have no say so over that part of it, but I would say that no matter what, he took money after 10-1. If, and that's the truth, then you have to deal with that part of it. You have to own that part of it. Because if you're saying that you've evolved on gun reform and then and went through that tragedy there and then turn around and took money from the gun owners for, that marketed to kids that are under 10 and above for machine gun shooting, then I think you have to deal with that part of it. Whatever I might have taken from a company that's involved with the gun range, a legal licensed company, be that in Clark County, I donated multiple times personal that money of my own to the Victims Fund to help as it relates to this tragedy. I've made numerous mistakes uh, in my political career. I served 10 years on the Board of Regents and did the best job I always can, I always could. I continue to do the best job. I go to work every single day and you're not going to get anybody that works harder or more diligently than I do. The scumbag politicians of Vegas never miss a chance for a photo op, particularly a national photo op. Yeah. And so when when the whole eyes of the world were on Vegas, you had um, Steve Sisolak, who's running for governor, very publicly <laughs> starting, you know, rallying behind this Vegas strong fund. And, and um, you know, I actually showed up and filmed some things and he was there just glad handing everybody and Vegas strong this and that. And as soon as the cameras were off, he was like out of there. You yeah, know? just zoom, like, like a roadrunner. Just, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, was Vegas strong? And that's why we call the movie Vegas Wrong. Was yeah. it really about helping the victims who, you know, many of have never even gotten that Vegas strong money? Or was it about helping themselves? Was it about people like Steve Sisolak helping themselves? And I think it was. I think he, you know, and this guy, Steve Sisolak, this guy's a city councilman running for governor. And, and you, you look in a lot of the press conferences and you see him. He's the silver haired guy in the back. And you ask yourself, what the hell is this guy doing here? But what he's doing there is getting himself national face time so he's the next governor and very publicly supporting Vegas strong. But he doesn't appear to care too much about the money actually getting to the victims because I've interviewed yeah. a lot of them who haven't seen any. And, well, they're, you know, so it's just you just it's just a scumbag parade in this town when you're yeah. talking about and, Vegas politicians. And, and see, the interesting thing about Steve Sisolak was actually three or four years ago, he was the biggest opponent of the police department. This was a guy who called out the sheriff, uh, Doug Gillespie, that was before Lombardo got in office. He basically called him out to the point where the sheriff, Doug Gillespie, like went out in front of the LVMPD headquarters and he says, I'm offended. So he was talking about Steve Sisolak, you know, four or five years ago, Steve Sisolak was like the biggest enemy of the police department. And now he's like glad handing Lombardo and, and kissing ass and making sure that his face is on national television and, and supposedly being the ambassador of Vegas Strong when it appears that all it's really about is him getting FaceTime and trying to help himself get elected governor. Here are three questions Sisolak and June Kiliani won't answer. One, how do you define assault rifles? Sisolak and June Kiliani's gun control plans have many similarities. The most far-reaching proposal of each involves assault weapons. But what qualifies as an assault weapon? Sisolak and June Kiliani aren't saying. It says something about the media that no one else, to the best of my knowledge, has asked that question when reporting this. That's like reporting that a Republican supports cutting taxes, but not asking which tax he or she is referring to has renewed the debate on gun control and a background check law that was passed by Nevada voters also still not being enforced. News Street's Kelsey Thomas looks at whether the will of voters could be enforced under Nevada's new governor-elect. Kelsey? Well, Heather, just days after America saw another mass shooting, Nevada governor-elect Steve Sisolak says he will take on the issue of guns. Another community, another mass shooting. This time, 12 lives lost in an instant. The Trump administration is officially banning bump stocks, the device gaining national attention 
when it was used last year in the one October shooting, killing 58 people. Bump stocks make it easier to fire rounds from a semi-automatic weapon. Basically, they harness the gun's recoil to bump the trigger faster. This is a device that people use to modify an otherwise non-automatic weapon to become automatic. The issue hits home for a lot of people in Las Vegas. The DOJ found that bump stocks are more than just gun accessories. Now they're officially banned. Anyone who has one has to turn them in or destroy them by March 21st. The bottom line is I think that some people will turn in their bump stocks if they're going to follow the law. It will prevent other people, I believe, from purchasing or assembling uh, a bump stock. So I think it will save lives. I'll begin by thanking the sheriff. He, uh, I got down here eight or nine hours ago and there weren't many of us here eight or nine hours ago. There was just a handful uh, immediately after this incident. But I can tell you that our first responders, both the fire uh, men and women of the fire department and Metro were on their way in when uh, this all happened. We've got first responders that are literally covered in blood. As a result of this, there's a lot of victims have not been identified as of this point, but they have stepped up. Uh, it was a sole shooter. There is uh, no further threat that we're aware of, no immediate threat. I want to assure everyone that's listening that here's our words that Las Vegas is safe. The men and women at Mandalay Bay and MGM Resorts have been incredible in terms of communicating and working with the sheriff's office in order to assure us that everybody can you know, be taken care of, get back into the rooms, and that they all understand that we are safe and we are doing everything humanly possible to protect all our tourists and our citizens in Clark County. That being said, the sheriff and I have set up a GoFundMe account that some of you might have seen. Uh, we have been inundated with phone calls and emails and text messages of people asking what the, they can do. Uh, there's going to be a lot of family members that are going through an awful lot at this particular time. As the sheriff said, we have over 500 in our hospitals being treated, and we need to provide them with some sort of support. So we have done that, and I just can't say enough about the uh, fine men and women uh, that are our first responders here. And, in Clark County and all of the cities and jurisdictions have pulled together. And I thank them all for that. We've pledged the full resources of Clark County to assist the sheriff and the FBI in any way humanly possible. It will be at a service and we uh, ask for your prayers. God bless you. To Commissioner Sislak and he will give you an update on the donation phase of this as far as victim um, satisfaction and then I will return and we will conduct uh, a Q&A associated with the investigation. Commissioner. Thank you, Sheriff, and we appreciate you all being here today to give you a little bit of an update on where we stand. Uh, the fund that the Sheriff and I set up yesterday has now surpassed 53,000 individual donations. It's in excess of $3.7 million as we speak. I want to bring, especially, we need a lot more resources. We're going to need a lot more money. We've got individuals that are going to need future surgeries and, and health and so forth moving forward. I want to acknowledge a few special individuals not included in that total of $3.7 million. Last night, a private citizen called both the sheriff and I and contributed $500,000 to the fund. That is not included in that total. This morning, uh, Wayne and Kathleen Newton called me, and they have donated $100,000. That is not included in that total. Uh, for those who want to contribute and don't want to do it on GoFundMe, you can make a check to Las Vegas Victims Fund and mail it either to the county office, to my office, or to the sheriff's office. But I just got off the phone with Jim uh, Murren from MGM International, and the sheriff and I both spoke to Jim, and uh, obviously they have stepped up in an enormous manner with this community and everything that uh, they continue to do. And on behalf of MGM and their over 50,000 employees, they have contributed $3 million to this fund. So uh, we appreciate everyone's support, the donations from $5 to now $3 million. And there's a lot of need, and we are going to do everything we possibly can to raise money for each of these individuals. So we appreciate you continuing to encourage folks, your viewers and readers, to support the uh, campaign. It's Las Vegas Victims, either on uh, GoFundMe, or you can make a check to Las Vegas Victims Fund. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sheriff. Sure. I'll never forget driving down after the shooting, walking through the site, hearing cell phones ringing with people trying to find their loved ones. The next morning, the sheriff and I started the Victims Fund. But you know, money won't stop the next massacre, not when Donald Trump protects the NRA and Adam Laxalt won't enforce background checks. When I'm governor, we're going to ban assault rifles, bump stocks, silencers. We need to take action. 
and now is the time to take action.